Welcome to Design World's How to Calculate series, where you learn how to apply the most important equations for sizing, selecting, and comparing linear motion and motion control products. In this session, we'll learn how to calculate the combined static load for recirculating ball and roller bearings. In a previous How to Calculate session, we looked at dynamic load capacity and how it affects the L10 life of a linear recirculating ball or roller bearing. But static loads, loads the bearing encounters when it's not moving, are also an important factor in bearing selection. The static load capacity of a bearing is the force that causes permanent deformation of the rolling element and the raceway, equaling 0.01% of the rolling element diameter. If this deformation is exceeded, the running characteristics will be degraded, resulting in vibration, noise, and increased friction. As its name suggests, static load capacity is applicable only in a static or non-moving state. Although it's not used in bearing life calculations, static load capacity is an important parameter for recirculating linear bearings. Exceeding the static load capacity will certainly, not just statistically, compromise bearing performance. Although linear bearings are primarily associated with motion, for example, moving a tool, a dispensing head, or a load from one point to another, most linear guides also operate under static conditions for at least part of their life. If the static load case is not taken into account, then a bearing that has a theoretical life of 150,000 meters, for example, may fail much earlier than this predicted life due to deformation caused by static loading. Static loading generally occurs when the bearing is stationary but loaded for long periods of time, when the bearing is loaded and moving at very slow speeds, or when the bearing experiences high shock loads. For example, a drilling tool on the end of a linear guide will experience a static load when the guide stops moving and the drill is operating. Similarly, a vertically mounted guide is subjected to a static load when it holds a load at the top of the stroke. Shocks and vibrations, on the other hand, are often caused by conditions that are random, unpredictable, and or difficult to quantify. In a static, non-moving state, linear bearings are typically subjected to a combination of downward loads, side loads, and moment loads. The combined static load equation takes into account all these various types of loading. The formula for combined static load depends on the number of guides and the number of bearings being used. We'll start with the case of a single linear bearing on a single guide rail. In this configuration, the bearing experiences forces in both the y and z directions but not in the x direction, because that's the direction of motion. And moment loads can occur around any of the three axes, x, y, or z. This means there can be as many as five different components to the bearing static load. Notice that to convert the static moments to static forces, we divide the applied moment by the moment capacity of the bearing, and then multiply that by the bearing static load capacity. Also notice that we use the absolute values of the forces and moments in this equation. Most linear bearing applications use more than one linear bearing on a guide rail, and demanding applications typically use two guide rails in parallel with one, two, or sometimes even three or more bearings on each rail. The benefit of multiple bearings per guide rail and multiple rails used in parallel is that moment loads are resolved into forces. Because linear bearings generally have higher load capacities than moment capacities, using multiple bearings and multiple guide rails to counteract moment loads will typically result in longer bearing life. For a single linear guide with two bearings, the combined static load equation becomes a bit simpler because there are no moments in the y or z directions. The second bearing resolves these moments into forces in the y and z directions. Similarly, notice that for two linear guides with a single bearing each, there is no moment load in the x direction. The arrangement of two bearings side by side resolves the moment about the x-axis into forces in the z direction. A common arrangement for applications with high loads or moment loads is to use two linear guides in parallel with two bearings each. In this configuration, there are no moment forces at all. The four bearing arrangement allows all the moment loads in the x, y, and z direction to be resolved into forces in the y and z directions. Once you've calculated the combined static load, you can use this to determine the static load safety factor. The static load safety factor is calculated by dividing the basic static load rating by the combined static load of the most heavily loaded bearing. 
The recommended safety factor is given by the manufacturer based on the type of loading and whether the bearing will experience low, moderate, or high impact forces and vibrations. It often ranges from 1 to 8 and is used to ensure the bearing will never experience a load that causes permanent plastic deformation of the balls or the raceways. For more information on linear bearings and other linear motion topics, visit LinearMotionTips.com or DesignWorldOnline.com. Thanks for watching.